watch what Jackie Thompson check it out. Now, Drake is an enigma, man. International Drizzy has came out in the recent years. I mean, he's OVO Ditto. One week, we got Drizzy Marley from Kingston, Jamaica, halfway tree. All right, the next minute, we have um, UK Roadman Drizzy. Okay, always with the man's demo, all right? Then pretty much after that, we got a light skin, no lacking, savage out of Chirac, a 600 Drizzy. I mean, he's BD and GD. He's glowed up one minute. He ain't lacking the next. Now, another week, you could catch Drizzy rhyming over some Bay Area sounds talking about all oh, mamas, right? Then again, we'll be sounding like he's straight out of Houston, right? Sipping lean. Then you'll hear him with Gucci, and he's sounding like he's straight out of Zone 6. And I'm not talking about Toronto the 6, but I'm talking about Zone 6, like Zone 6 Atlanta. And he's rapping about he's a thug and he got the pistol waiting for the ops. Now, in a few songs dropped this weekend, Drake is either frantically trying to grab a hold of his current spot at top of the rap game and he's trying to make sure he doesn't fall or he's trying to still experiment and see what could take him even higher, okay? Because after he dropped about four songs this weekend... He dropped a song with Gucci called Back on Road. He dropped another one with Khaled called For Free. Another one, which is a 4 p.m. in Calabasas type track, which, of course, is a very lyrical track. And he definitely goes kind of 90s era bad boys on us. And the most interesting thing in this whole type of thing, because he definitely would sneak this in about 10 people. But most notably, it feels like he was taking jabs at Diddy. Now, Diddy was shook like a motherfucker when Drake's name was brought up on The Breakfast Club not too long ago. And like, What made you put hands on Drake? I did not put hands on Drake. Oh. And I do not want any problems with Drake. Drake is, right now, <laughs> that's all I got. <laughs> that's all I, I have to say. He's putting in his work. I didn't, put, I didn't do nothing to Drake. We not. It seemed that he was kind of like either asking for forgiveness about Drake or he was saying everything was cool. But according to these lines that Drake keep referencing, I don't think they cool. Now, I, w I do have to say about this particular track, 4 p.m. in Calabasas, is the best lyrical work by Drake since 30 for 30 or 6 p.m. in New York, so I definitely love it. But he sneaked this Diddy on the track, and you know he'll never admit it, but he said this, okay? And it's a couple of lines he kept referencing back to Diddy. Now, he did use some Mace lines as well, so maybe he was giving them like a big up. But from the lines I'm seeing that kind of pertains to Diddy, he's kind of talking about niggas trying to get at him, and he don't give a fuck. But anyway, let me read it. Now, one of the lines was actually this. Okay, he says, even the OG's trying to press me. Ha, 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 ha. No way out because I'm in it already. Now, basically, the first part of that bar, the OG's trying to press me, it could have to do with, like, a bunch of people, right? From Jay-Z all the way to Diddy, all the way to all these imaginary Illuminati people that he be talking about constantly, talking about they out to get me. And, um, of course, he kind of relates it to Diddy because he says No Way Out, which is a Diddy album that came out in 97. So that kind of ties it back. So the OG's trying to press him. I've got to believe that one of them is Diddy when Diddy slapped him, okay? Now, also, um, when he says uh, can't nobody hold us down, uh, especially right now, certain shit too wild to reconcile, the Can't Hold Me Down reference is really a uh, reference to a classic song that Diddy released. And then he also has another line that says, take that, take that, no love in their heart. So they fake that. It's another reference to a popular saying or ad lib by Diddy. Now, I just got to say, man, it's a very thin line between a sneak this and actually just paying homage. And I got to just say, I think he sneaked this in Diddy, man. He sneaked this in Diddy, but I don't think Diddy going to respond to this shit, man. Diddy's trying to pay for a feature. Diddy Sean pay for a, a fucking verse. Now, if you guys don't know why they were mad at each other in the first place, reportedly, Drake got slapped after he was scheduled or he was set to write a song for Diddy to the 0 to 100 beat. He wrote the song, or somebody wrote the song. We're not sure if he did. But he had the song, and he just recorded it and put it out his goddamn self instead of sending it to uh, Diddy. Diddy heard it on the radio. Diddy was infuriated. The next time Diddy saw him, Diddy pressed him, and Diddy uh, supposedly slapped him. OK, um, while Diddy has never really just said, yeah, I slapped that bitch nigga because of this. Diddy kind of hinted towards like, yeah, it is true. And Drake has finally like came out to like uh, speak his piece on it. And pretty much he's just trying to say, yo, these niggas can't hold me down. And some niggas don't want me to be at the position I am. But I still can't even understand why Diddy would have that jealousy in his heart. Diddy's not even a rapper like that. You know what I mean? Diddy's like a businessman. So maybe it's in a weird, twisted way, just him kind of like making reference or bigging up Diddy because in a way he's using uh kind of a 90s flow in some parts he's using Mace lines and he's using Diddy lines or play off Diddy lines and um 
titles or album titles and song titles. So you never know what it is, man. But you guys get in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think. Pretty much he seems to be sneak this and Diddy, but you never know, man. It's Drizzy the motherfucking uh, chameleon. All right? Get in the comments. If you guys like, definitely subscribe to Bull Jackademics. I'm up.